In this video, we're going to review a very basic knee MRI. We're targeting this for a general audience, and therefore we're going to choose coronal images in order to simplify things a little bit. Coronal images are the ones you're looking at right now, and they're intended to be very anatomic, meaning that this, in the case of this patient, this is a right knee, and we're seeing the, the patient uh, facing forward. So we have basic bone anatomy here, the femur, the tibia, and the fibula. So the fibula is on the lateral side, so that's how we can know uh, that this is a right knee. But that doesn't matter that much as long as you're able to visualize the anatomy of what we're trying to depict here. So in terms of, of a basic approach to a knee, uh, on the left we have a T1 sequence, and on the, on the right we have a T2 sequence here. Um, again, this obviously might change uh, depending on how you arrange things. But the most important thing is to notice uh, on the T1, in which is our more anatomic uh, image, start noticing the black lines here. Those are the uh, lateral collateral ligaments here and the medial collateral. And so those, we look at them, there's a little bit of motion artifact in this MRI. Uh, but you can see that the lateral collateral ligament is pretty much intact. We don't see any, any breaks or anything concerning, and this isn't just one sequence. Uh, as a radiologist, you have to look at other sequences to really see what's happening here. We have some areas in which the black line becomes a little bit gray, and that already uh, triggers, uh, in my mind, a little bit of, a, of an alarm, so I have to look at that in other sequences. Then the other things that we look at are the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. Uh, we look at them here to make sure that we can see them attaching where they're supposed to attach. I'm going to turn, turn the attention on this side for the ACL. So the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, which you probably hear a lot uh, when uh, talking about sports. And this one is a little bit more difficult for beginners because they... Uh, this uh, ligament can have a little bit of signal intensity based on different things of angles and uh, there's some normal fat that can be seen uh, on the anterior and distal aspect of the ACL. But in this patient, the ACL looks pretty good and the PCL looks even better. Then this is called also a fluid sensitive sequence. So anything that um, has increased fluid or edema is going to look white. So that's why we see all the whiteness uh, in this area. Then looking at the menisci, which are kind of like the chalk absorbers of the knee, here we have the lateral meniscus, and it's that black triangle, and that looks pretty good as we move along. And we see the attachment here and everything. And remember, we're doing all this in just one sequence or one type of picture for, for a radiologist, and we're already able to tell a lot of information. So here on this side, that's the normal black line, and I'm following it as I move along the knee joint, and then I start seeing some brightness here. Uh, I also see that there's absence uh, here of, of what I would expect to have more menisci tissue, or meniscus tissue, uh, and there's this blob here uh, to the side. So as I keep going, I notice several things, I'm also, Looking at this image here, I see this black area. Uh, and this is an area of, of some uh, variation in terms of terminology. People can talk about this as technically the subchondral bone because it's below the articular cartilage. And this uh, area here that's dark, I'm going to look at on, on this side, and I see that there's some areas that are dark, but there's also some brightness around that. So that implies that there's some active inflammation or bone marrow edema happening here. So if we look closely, another detail, and this is almost an expert level detail, you have to look at the articular cartilage here. So you see here there's some uh, white line in comparison uh, to the dark part of the femur here, and you also see it here. If we turn our attention to the other side, it's very hard to see it. We see some white, or I should say maybe uh, light gray, and then we don't see anything, and then we see that fluid there. So this is an example of articular cartilage being uh, lost. It can be referred to as an erosion, 
um, and there's no articular cartilage and, and no meniscus in this area. So that is the mechanism that is causing some um, discomfort and eventually a subchondral fracture in this patient. We also have some osteophytes, which are irregularities of this bone in this area. And we can see already a series of changes that are happening due to this uh, increased stress of the, uh, of the medial compartment of the knee joint. And um, the other thing I wanted to point out, that thickening that we saw in the medial collateral ligament, here we have uh, increased signal intensity, some fluid around, around the ligament. So this is the typical appearance of a ligament sprain. Uh, and that's what's happening here in this patient. There are a lot of uh, other, a little bit more subtle uh, findings, but they're not that important for this video since I want to emphasize really the basic approach here. Um, we can look at things on other planes that uh, might be relevant for uh, physicians that want to look at certain things in, in other plane because they either train uh, learning the ligaments on, on that angle and it might be easier for them to see them here. So here we see the anterior cruciate ligament and then we have the posterior cruciate ligament here. Uh, all, all this white stuff is fluid, so this is a suprapatellar uh, joint effusion and this pretty much summarizes most of the findings that uh, we can expect to to see uh, with this patient. We also have the quadriceps tendon and then we have the uh, patellar tendon here. So we have a little bit of, of everything in terms of anatomy that we're able to see just in, in coronal which was the one where the knees facing forward. This is the sagittal plane in which you're looking at the knee from the side. So this is a quick overview of my approach in terms of, of the knee. So to summarize, what we did is we looked at the coronal images on two different sequences, which are two different types of acquisition. And the first thing we looked at are the uh, collateral ligaments. After looking at the collateral ligaments, we looked at the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. So you can see the pattern. We're looking at ligaments first in, in our first pass, uh, looking at the knee. After that, we can turn our attention to the menisci uh, and see the lateral and medial meniscus. And we can have a different video talking about the morphology and some of the tears that happen um, in, the, in the meniscus. In, the, in this case, uh, the medial meniscus uh, had a complex tear, but we didn't go into too much details on that, but we'll do that on a separate video. But just so that you know, there is a, a medial meniscal tear uh, in this patient. And then uh, finally, we review the articular cartilage, which is more and more important as we start understanding more about the uh, pathophysiology of these type of injuries. And we also mentioned the distal quadriceps tendon, the patellar tendon, and joint fluid. So that pretty much summarizes what would be a basic routine for looking and interpreting a, an MRI of the knee. So thank you very much, and we'll see you uh, on the next video where we're going to talk a little bit more about MRI.